Hello, my lovely anatomist. I'm so glad you could join me. Our topic for this series of videos will be the lymphatic system. So we're going to dig a little deeper into the overall organization of the lymphatic vessels, as well as the lymph tissues and lymph organs. So let us get started by looking at the origin of the lymph. All right, y'all, so we are taking a look here at the lymphatic capillary, which is basically like the beginning of the lymphatic system. And we see that the lymphatic system is represented by green. And we see that the network of capillaries and vessels basically parallel the blood vessels, the blood capillaries. So over here, we're looking at the blood capillary. And we can see the origin of the lymph. So what we're seeing is the fluid, water, electrolytes, nutrients, oxygen, hormones, all of these materials will leave the blood capillary as we discussed in cardiovascular system and move across the, flu the tissues. And when that fluid moves across the tissues, we call that fluid either interstitial fluid or extracellular fluid. That extracellular fluid, some of that will actually move into our lymphatic capillary. And as soon as that fluid enters the lymphatic capillary, we would refer to that fluid now as lymph. And so what we'll see as we study our lymphatic capillary, we should be able to recognize that it is um, a blind pocket. And what this means is, you know, there's just a starting point here to the capillary. It's not continuous network like we saw in the circulatory system and the cardiovascular system. We see also that you have a unidirectional movement. So what we'll see is the position, the overlap of the cells that make up the wall of the lymphatic capillary create what we can call a one-way valve. So fluid moves in, but not out of that capillary. And so you'll see all your arrows going in one direction. We will see that there are valves in the lymphatic capillary, and this is preventing the fluid from moving backwards in the system. We can also talk about our lymphatic capillary as being larger than our blood capillary. So these are some ways that the lymphatic capillary is quite different from what we studied in the cardiovascular system. What we see then here is the origin of the lymph, which is the fluid of the lymphatic system, moving into that lymphatic capillary. From the capillary, what we see happening is our lymph flows into um, progressively larger lymphatic vessels. And from these larger lymphatic vessels, it moves into what are referred to as lymphatic trunks. So again, progressively bigger and bigger. And from there, we see that the fluid will move either into the right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct. And in, in both of these cases, we see that the right lymphatic duct empties into the right subclavian vein. And so the fluid, the lymph fluid, moves ultimately back into our circulation. Notice the thoracic duct is emptying into the left subclavian vein. So most of the fluid, most of the fluid is draining into, let me re, most of the 
most of the fluid of the body, most of the lymph is flowing into the thoracic duct. So we can see it here in the abdominal region and we can see it here in the top left side of the chest. The enlarged base of the thoracic duct has a special name called the cisterna chyli. The right lymphatic duct is only draining like this, this portion something like this portion of the body it includes a little pinky that didn't make it in my lines. So I have another diagram that I'll show you on the next slide that highlights that division a little bit better. Now notice as the lymph is moving through this network of vessels, we have these enlarged places um, and these enlarged places are called lymph nodes. And so this is gonna be an important organ of the lymphatic system. And this is gonna filter out about 99% of pathogens. So remember, ultimately this fluid is dumping into the bloodstream, directly into the bloodstream. And so it's important that we filtered that out um, beforehand. As you look at this particular diagram, you can see these collection of lymph nodes are positioned strategically in places where pathogens maybe have access. So you see, a huge collection in the groin area. You see a huge collection associated with the digestive system organs, abdominal um, area. You have a huge collection in the neck close to where the mouth, nose, and ear would be possible points of access. And you have another pretty large collection associated with the axillae or armpit area. In addition to lymph nodes, the other key organs that we will label here would be the thymus and the spleen. So these are organs that we've mentioned before and a little bit. So I'm gonna use red to square off those structures that are considered to be organs. Then we have what are described as nodules. So this is more like lymphatic tissue and we'll talk about what we mean um, in a little bit. So we'll see tonsils as an example and we'll have five of these or so that we'll name. We have this huge collection of these lymph tissues in that digestive system tract. We call this mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, which we can abbreviate as MALT. And so this is gonna be, again, a collection of nodule lymphoid tissue. And then we see the appendix as another example of a lymphoid nodule. And this is a structure that's found as part of the large intestine. So we'll study it again in more detail when we look at the digestive system. Okay, looking at one more um, diagram, we can see here the difference between the right lymphatic duct. So that lighter colored um, kind of teal is the area of the body that drains into the right lymphatic duct. So we can see that the thoracic duct is actually collecting more fluid from the body. When we're looking here, we can remind ourselves here of the left subclavian vein and the right subclavian vein. And we can see here that that right lymphatic duct goes directly into the right subclavian vein, whereas the thoracic duct 
goes into the left subclavian vein. Remember this enlarged kind of um, starting point for the thoracic duct is called the cisterna chyli. All right, and stay tuned for some videos looking at lymphoid nodules. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other.